Welcome back to another session of RD Works Learning Lab. Today we're going to make a few modifications to the machine. Probably anybody who's watched this series will have seen me with my pin bed and these little uh, pogo pins. Uh, the only reason I used pogo pins was because I had them, they were free. But over time, when I start putting heavy loads on there, I do find that unless I have a lot of pins in, I do get a little bit of flex. I'm going to change these for something that is cheap. You can all get hold of. There we are. Now these have just arrived in the post this morning. And these are 2mm stainless steel dowels that are 32mm long. Absolutely perfect for doing this job. I've made them as thin as I possibly can. And of course at 2mm diameter <laughs> they're too loose to fit in there. So I'm going to have to make some new base plates. It's not a problem because I've learned a couple of things about these base plates which will enable me to improve the Mark II design or the Mark III design even because I had a, a very crude original one to start with. And look, once the, um, once the plate starts getting some burn marks on it, it has a tendency to slightly distort. And so these plates have started curling up at the end. Uh, it's not too much of a problem as far as location is concerned, but it does make them slightly unstable in the machine. They've got a tendency to move around easily. So I'm going to tackle the problem a slightly different way this time. So let's say goodbye to these pogo pins. I shall put them by for a rainy day when I shall need them for another job. Well, this is undoubtedly quicker than marking out by hand. I've put all the pilot holes in now. We're drilling those out 2mm diameter, but I suspect they'll go undersized and I should have to put a 2mm reamer through. Still a lot of holes to drill. something like a 2.05 drill because now I've got to go around and open all the holes up very slightly with a 2mm reamer. So this time we are tackling maybe two problems that I discovered before, or not problems but weaknesses. Um, first of all we noticed that this plate sagged in the middle. Um, well what actually happened is this is the top, this will be the top surface. When the top gets cut it tends to curl the top up and leave the bottom sagging. So what I'm planning to do this time is to put rubber feet on the corners and we'll put our rubber feet in from the edge so that there's no chance that the laser beam can get anywhere near it. It's got to cut its way through eight millimeters of perspex and the residual power on the beam is unlikely to do that. And of course not only will it stop them sliding around, it will also raise the middle up. There we go. Right. Here it is all up assembled and in the machine. Now as you can see I've got any adjustment I want I can move things in, out, around. Um, <clears throat> But what I've done along the front edge here, because I've, this, is, this is another advantage that I've discovered accidentally by putting these rubber feet on here, um, <clears throat> I can put pieces of 3mm stainless, the little pads that I've got, <clears throat> just underneath the edge holes. And when I drop my pin in there, <clears throat> it'll raise these edge pins up by 3mm. So consequently, I've now made myself a nice simple registration for when I put my paper in there, it registers down this edge and along that edge and these pins barely stick up enough, well they don't stick up enough to hit the nozzle. So I'm just in the process of setting up pins around the edge to support the edge of an A4 sheet. That's the whole of the edge of an A4 sheet supported. Now the question is, how much more support do I want? Well, I can put as much or as little as I want down the middle here and generally for card, I probably only need 
uh, another half dozen down the middle here just to support and stop the sheet from sagging. I like to leave as much open space as possible under the pins so that there's room for all my debris just to fall out. It sits on there and it's flat and it's got nothing underneath it. There's our first part, and now we make the second part. Well, here we are with the end of our little uh, project. It's a little favour box or a little gift box yeah. with, a, with a piece of double sided tape for joining it and the little tabs in the bottom all locked together. And we push the corners in and fold the top over. And then the plan is to hold it all together with these little pieces here. Which we just fold in half. <clears throat> and then they have a half lap joint in them. Like that, so that they actually sit together. We'll lift that one up to start with because what we have to do is to plug that in there and that one in there and it holds the whole box together it stops the top from coming apart and just plug these into the top here like that and then if we really want to I can make it look slightly more spacey 